Hi, this is your humble multimeter, and you're used to it just on DC volts here, reading zero volts when you are just got your probes sitting there on the bench. It's reading nothing. And you might be uh, familiar, of course, if you switch it over to millivolts, you know, it might pick up a little bit of noise there. And if you put your hands on there, you know, you might get a few like tens or even hundreds of millivolts noise. But generally, it's around about, you know, zero volts, something like that, especially if you put it on the voltage range like this. Well... What happens if you take the same leads and you plug them into like a high-end six and a half digit or seven and a half digit multimeter like this? Well, uh, Bueller, Bueller, that's um, one and a half volts. What's going on there? Something's a bit weird. Why are we getting like a volt and a half? Well, let's go over to the Keysight meter up here and... Let's plug in the exact same leads. Oh, we're still getting a volt. I can hear you saying, Dave, I know what's going on here. Bench meters are famous for having like a high input impedance on like the millivolt range and even up into uh, several of one or several of the voltage ranges. Well, if we go into there, you'll see that no, we're 10 meg ohms input impedance. And if we go auto, um, input Z, yeah, it goes a bit higher and stuff like that, and it might charge up because you've effectively got uh, infinite input impedance. But um, and if we like manually range it like this, look, on the one volt range, we're getting overload, overload, overload. What? What's going on? And let's try an older school uh, bench meter. In this case, a um, old Phillips uh, six and a half digit jobby. And if you listen very carefully, you might be able to hear something. You can hear a relay in there, range switching, because it's just going crazy. It doesn't know whether it's volts, millivolts, or whatever. You can see the M uh, flash up there very briefly. It's just going berserk. And this is actually uh, very real stuff. Look, if we go into the uh, trend chart over here, we can see, look at that. I mean, that's, we can auto scale that. Look at that. I mean, there's real stuff on there at like almost two volts, plus minus two volts peak to peak. It's enormous. Why? As I said, we've got 10 meg ohms input impedance. Exactly the same as your regular multimeter. What's going on? Why does this show zero and these higher end meters show like a couple of volts? And we can even choose to like like slowly data log this as well. Look at this. I'm doing uh, like one sample per second. One, it's like minus one volt. Um, it, it's all over the place. Look, but you might see it is actually counting down. That's interesting. And if we do a trend chart of uh, this slow ones once per second data login, hmm, there you go. I left it for a bit and this is what we're getting. It's kind of, sort of, sinusoidal, not really, but something's going on. Look at that. Oh, there's a bit, a bit of wiggle, 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 yeah, going on down the bottom there. And it'll probably go back up shortly. You watch. Come on, come on, I'm betting it will. You betcha. Here you go, go you little beauty. Up it goes, all the way. You can do it. Oh, add a little jaggy there. But you can see this is like real interesting stuff. This is real logged data. Once again, with the probe sitting in exactly the same position we had for the other meters. It's interesting. It's picking up something. But of course, everyone knows what it's picking up. It's just picking up mains and crap, right? And sure enough, if we short the probes, it is zero. And we can go back to our uh, number display there and zero volts. And we take our hand off that. And there we go. It's going up 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7. <laughs> Once again, this is 10 meg ohms input impedance. Exactly the same as our 10 meg ohm input impedance multimeter here. So why the difference? Well, I'm glad you asked. It has to do with the number of power line cycles or the integration time of the multimeter. Your typical handheld multimeters are like these, these are relatively uh, slow. You used to, you know, like a really fast one will get five or even some on the market might do like seven times a second or something like that. They're really quite slow. But these actually have built in 50 slash uh, 60 hertz. Sometimes it's selectable, sometimes it's not. Um, filters in them. Uh, so they're actually filtering in out the power line frequencies because in any sort of uh, lab or environment uh, where you're measuring stuff, uh, 50 hertz is going to be, or, or 60 hertz for you yanks, 
banks um, is going to be like uh, one of the predominant um, interference sources in a typical uh, environment, office or lab environment. So your handheld multimeters are being very nice to you and they actually have that uh, integration time set so that it takes samples long enough that it actually effectively filters out 50 hertz or 60 hertz uh, interference frequencies. But your higher end multimeters like this, uh, they may or may not do it by default. You've actually got to go into the menu and check out the number of power line cycles. So if we go into DC volts here, you'll see I'm at 0.2 PLC or power line cycles. Right, so I'll just stop my data log in here and we'll go back to a continuous uh, display. Right, and there we go, we're in volts and number of power line cycles, this actually determines the accuracy of your meter as well. So NPLC is the acronym uh, for it. And you can also do time as well um, in milliseconds. They're effectively like essentially the same thing. The number of power line cycles means it'll do an integration measurement over one 50 or 60 hertz power line cycle. So if MPLC is set to one, and then you can do that in milliseconds as well. I mean, you know, 50 hertz would be 20 milliseconds, of course. So you can see if I've actually got that value very low, I don't get many uh, significant digits there. And I also get quite a lot of noise here. And if I go to 0.02 power line cycles, 0.06, we're still getting, um, you know, like volts of noise, right? And point two, we're still getting quite a lot of noise. But watch what happens when I go to one power line cycle. Ta-da! It's magically vanished because it's doing at least one full uh, integration of the 50 or 60 hertz power line cycle. So you're reducing the noise. And you can see, of course, that we've got more significant digits now. So if we go back, of course, we still have the same number of significant digits uh, there. It hasn't changed, but because the integration time is not long enough to do any um, effectively like averaging, so to speak, even though it's integration, I won't go into the differences. But, but anyway, if we go to there, and then if we go to 10 power line cycles, watch. Ta-da! We get an extra digit of resolution here, and of course we're getting our zero volts there. Once again, if I touch those leads, right, yeah, I can get, you know, tens of millivolts, basically um, equivalent to what we get on our um, handheld multimeter here. And I can show you how the uh, smoothing or, you know, average mathematical averaging doesn't do the same thing. It's actually to do with the measurement integration, not the post-measurement um, smoothing or something like that. So let's go down to, say, 0.2 uh, power line cycles here. And then we'll go into math up here. And where are we? We've got smoothing filter. There we go. If we turn the smoothing filter on, ah, it doesn't really do anything. So it's doing, and the response also, um, you know, 10 readings, 50 readings of smoothing, it doesn't help. So doing post sample uh, averaging and uh, smoothing does not help the situation. It's all to do with the, how the ADC works, and these are integrating ADCs. You might've heard of dual slope integration. I've probably done a video on dual slope or multi-slope integration. The key side have their multi-slope integration and there's dual slope and there's single slope and all sorts of things. But that's basically how your high-end multimeters, uh, well, even your handheld multimeters as well, like even your low-end ones, they use like dual slope integration. So it's, you know, if you don't have your uh, integration time of your measurement uh, set to actually uh, take into account and average out in the measurement the 50 or 60 hertz noise pickup, then uh, yeah, you're going to come a gutsa like this and you're going to measure volts and you can get the meter to do weird auto ranging stuff we saw on that Philips one. And the Keithley one down here, exactly the same uh, thing. Like I've got the smooth, that smoothing filter is actually on, right? The smoothing filter doesn't do anything. It doesn't help your cause at all. And check it out. It's just going me auto range. In there. Oh, look, it's even going like 10 volts, 1 volt, right? It, it just doesn't know what to do. It's just absolutely nuts. And you turn on the smoothing filter and, well, it's still... <laughs> it's a little bit slower, of course, but the, those high voltages are still there. It's not getting rid of them. And once again, we're still 10 mega ohms input impedance. But you'll see that we're 0.1 power line cycles. So I'll turn off the filter here and we'll change that to 1 power line cycle. Bingo! it's gone away because we're doing at least one, an integration over one full 50 or 60 hertz power line cycle.
nice. And as I said, uh, meters will typically have like a setup in there for 50 or 60 hertz. And just to show you the actual waveform that we are picking up here, what I've got is I've replaced the multimeter leads with just uh, some banana plug leads flapping around in the breeze there. And I've got a uh, 10 to 1 uh, probe directly coax connected across there. So we've effectively got a 5 mega ohm uh, input impedance now uh, total, but we're going to be, you know, that's still quite high enough to pick up uh, the noise and stuff. So if we go in here and we have a look at our trend chart, you can see that we're getting like plus minus a volt there. Does that correlate with the oscilloscope? Yep, it does. Check it out. There you go. <laughs> plus minus a volt there. So yeah, no worries. And I was getting before, but I'm not now. Unfortunately, I was getting like large um, spikes on there. So something was switching in here. I don't know what it's gone now. Of course it is. As soon as I hit record, white coat syndrome. And of course, if I touch those leads there, you can see, yeah, it just changes if you twist them it's going to change if you you know it depends where you got this will change from lab to lab whether or not you're holding them it'll change from one part of your lab to another it'll like just vary all the time because you've got such a large input impedance you can see that change that i just played around with there on the uh trend chart there and we can probably do that again let me get the leads and i'll actually twist them okay so what i've gone and done now is actually uh twisted the leads like that and you can see that that has significantly reduced the pickup there. But of course, it all has to do with the number of power line cycles. So when you're uh, playing around with your multimeter, especially these bench ones um, that can do a really fast integration uh, times and stuff like that, you need to know about your number of power line cycles and how not only how it can influence uh, the display resolution, um, but also can influence your noise pickup. There it is, just magically vanished. And if you want the most accurate readings, like you're going to put it on like a hundred power line uh, cycles. And to give you an example of this, I'm actually feeding in five volts uh, DC superimposed with a one volt peak to peak 50 hertz uh, sine wave. And you can see that it's bang on five volts because we've got the number of power line cycles equal to one. And if we go to point two, you know, there we go, it's jumping around like a jackrabbit, 0 0.02, 0 0.06, there you go, it's jumping around like crazy. But if we go to the number of power line cycles at least equal to one, it magically vanishes. And we can see that perfectly on the uh, trend chart here. You'll notice it's precisely uh, plus minus 0.5 of a volt there. One volt peak to peak, that's exactly what we're uh, seeing. And if we actually extracted that data and looked in, hopefully we can see a sine wave. But if we change our number of power line cycles, instantly go up to one, bingo, it's stopped. We're actually getting a flat line there now. And we can go back to point two power line cycles. And you can see at point two, it's getting a bit, we probably won't, if we actually looked at the data and zoomed in, we probably wouldn't see a perfect uh, sine wave there. But the lower that we go, the more solid you see that's going to get. Right, so what I've done is I've pulled the uh, data from the multimeter, put it into a spreadsheet here, and we can graph it. And I'm changing the modes in the power line cycles. And you can see like four distinct modes here. Now this flat one over here, this is five volts. We're of course feeding in five volts plus minus half a volt, 50 hertz. Uh, signal on there and we're completely flat line in here and you may have guessed this is one power line cycle so that's 20 milliseconds cycle time or aperture time as it's called or sampling time they're all basically the same thing it's just different uh, terminology some manufacturers might use a different uh, term but basically an aperture time there of 20 milliseconds so that allows us to get at 50 hertz signal this would be different for 60 but at 50 hertz we get one complete main cycle so it averages out and that's why we get a flat line and it's not averaging out mathematically later as we just uh, saw it's actually doing it in the integration or sampling time of the analog to digital converter the if, if it takes this much time to uh, sample it in that time the 50 hertz noise has gone exactly one complete cycle and it's just averaged itself out and we get five volts. Magic. But at this point here, I then switch to 0.2 power line cycles or four and now which is four milliseconds aperture or uh, sample time. And as you can see, we start to see a, you know, uh, up to like we start to see the peak there that 
one volt peak to peak signal there. But you might have noticed this, it's kind of like modulated. You might have seen this before in your oscilloscope. This looks like classic aliasing. This is all to do with your Nyquist stuff, right? Where you need at least twice the sample rate, otherwise you get aliasing. So we're clearly getting sampling artifacts here of our 50 hertz um, signal and it's just, it's not good enough because we're only sampling at with an aperture time of 4 milliseconds or 0.2 power line cycles. Now at this point here I switched over to 0.06 power line cycles or 1.2 milliseconds um, aperture time and as you can see we really start to get a pretty decent signal. It's still not absolutely perfect because our sample rate's not very high and at this point over here I switched to 0.02 power line cycles or 0.4 milliseconds uh, aperture time and as you can see we get pretty much a perfect sine wave there and you can see how it's effectively changed what looks like changing frequencies there at, at each point because we're taking more samples each time we set every, each time we change that number of power line cycles it's changing our sample rate effectively so there you go we get sampling artifacts just like you would on an oscilloscope or a data log or anything a bench multimeter is no different it's just a sampling system that's it. <laughs> it's not rock and science, just how these things work. And of course it all has to do with the input impedance. That 10 mega ohms is actually quite high and it, it picks it all up. And if you put, go whack a 1K resistor in parallel with it, it's going to knock it on the head. And when, if you go and measure uh, like a low impedance voltage source, like a battery, because it's got like milli ohms output, uh, so, well, a source impedance, and you measure that, that's why we can get, just the probes there, we can get like a volt of noise Yet when we measure our battery like that, we will get 1.30254 and we'll only get, the noise will only be a couple of least significant digits like that. So that's all to do with the impedance of your measurement source. In this case, the impedance of our measurement source is 10 meg and it's just pink and we've got these big antenna uh, leads on here picking up the 50 hertz, which is like plus minus a volt. So there you go, very interesting stuff. Number of power line cycles, it has to do with the integration time, which is different to any sort of smoothing or averaging mode, which the meter might do after that, because you're doing that after the measurement and not before. So it's all to do with uh, the measurement time of the analog to digital converter. And of course, it's gonna slow down your measurement the more number of power line uh, cycles you have, but you get increased accuracy and rejection of 50, 60 Hertz noise. So I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. As always, discuss it down below and check out my alternative platforms like Odyssey. I think I'm close to 60,000 subscribers on Odyssey now. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Catch you next time.